sequences. A sequence is just a list of numbers arranged in an order. Here's an example of a sequence. The first number in our sequence is 2, the second number is 5, the third number is 8, and the fourth number is 11. Let's label this sequence as capital A. We can also label the individual numbers in the sequence, which are known as the terms of the sequence. The first term is A1, the second term is A2, the third is A3, and the fourth is A4. This sequence has four terms, so it's an example of a finite sequence. Other sequences have an infinite number of terms, indicated by the dot 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 at the end of the sequence. This means the sequence continues on forever, so it's called an infinite sequence. Okay, let's look at another sequence, which we'll call B. In this sequence, what is B for? B sub 4 is the fourth element of the sequence. This is the first, second, third, and fourth, so B sub 4 is just one eighth. Right. B4 is the fourth term of the sequence, which is one eighth. So B1 is one, B2 is a half, B3 is a fourth, B4 is an eighth, and B5 is a sixteenth. Next question. What's a general formula for Bn, the nth term in the sequence? It'll be a formula that's a function of n. For example, when n is 3, your formula should tell you that b3 equals a fourth. All of our answer choices look like 1 over 2 to some power. So let's rewrite our sequence as 1 over 2 to some power. The first element, b sub 1, is 1 over 1, which we can write as 1 over 2 to the 0. b sub 2 could be 1 over 2 to the 1. b sub 3, 1 fourth, is 1 over 2 squared. 1 eighth is 1 over 2 cubed. And a sixteenth is 1 over 2 to the fourth. Notice that the power of 2 is always 1 less than the index of our sequence. So a formula that would capture that is b sub n is 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. That way the power of 2 is always 1 less than the index of b. Exactly right. bn equals 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Let's double check that answer by making sure that b5 is indeed equal to 1 16th. By this formula, b5 is equal to 1 over 2 to the 5 minus 1. 5 minus 1 equals 4. And 2 to the 4th equals 16. So sure enough, b5 equals 1 16th. Let's return to our original sequence. Try finding a formula for the nth element of this sequence. Let's try the formulas one by one. The first formula says that a sub n is equal to n plus 1. That's this formula here. If that was true, then a sub 3, for example, would be 3 plus 1, or 4. But we know from our sequence that a sub 3 is 8. So that's not right. The next one says that a sub n is equal to 3n minus 1. Putting in 3 for n there tells us that a sub 3 is going to be 8. 9 minus 1 is 8. That looks okay. Let's keep going. a sub n for the third formula, 3n plus 1, that says that a sub 3 is going to be 3 times 3 plus 1, which is 10. And finally, the last formula says that a sub n is equal to n squared plus 1. And that would tell us that a sub 3 equals 9 plus 1, or 10 again, which is also wrong. So the only one that gives us the correct value for a sub 3 is this one. We can check what a sub 2, a sub 1, and a sub 4 are for that sequence, and you'll find that they're 5, 2, and 11, respectively. So the only correct answer is that one. In this tutorial, we'll talk about series, as well as sigma notation. 
First, recall that a sequence is a list of numbers in a particular order. Here's a sequence which we'll call A. And let's say the sequence is one, a half, a quarter, an eighth, and a sixteenth. If A is an infinite sequence, then this list goes on forever. We can also label the terms of a sequence. The first term is A1, the second is A2, and so on. That's a sequence. So what's a series? To turn a sequence into a series, replace all the commas with plus signs. A series is the sum of all the terms of a sequence. What's the sum of this series? That is, what's the sum of these five terms here? Let's evaluate this sum. The common denominator is 16, so we can write it as 16 over 16, that's 1, plus 8 over 16, that's a half, a fourth is 4 sixteenths, and then we have an eighth and a sixteenth. The numerators add up to 31, and the denominator is 16. Great. It can take a lot of time to write out a series, especially if it's an infinite series. A shorter way to write down a series is to use what's called sigma notation, which we've shown here. This big symbol that kind of looks like an E is the Greek letter sigma. Let's talk about what all the letters and numbers here mean. The sigma means we're adding a bunch of numbers together, so the sigma tells us we're working with a series, also known as a summation. The number on the bottom is called the lower bound, and it indicates the start of the sum. The number at the top is called the upper bound, and it tells us where you stop the sum. The letter over here is called the index. It doesn't matter what letter you use, common letters include i, j, and k. And then the expression for each term is written to the right of the sigma. Okay, let's put this all together. Each term looks like the expression to the right of the sigma. But everywhere you see the index letter, which is i in this example, you plug in a number between the lower bound and the upper bound. The first term of the sum is a1, and then we keep adding more terms until the index equals the upper bound of 5. So this expression equals a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus a5. So this sigma expression is equal to this sum here. Okay, now it's your turn. Here's a series, 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 11. Which of the following is a way to write this series in sigma notation? We want the first term, or the i equals 1 term in the series, to be 2. The i equals 2 term should be 5. The i equals 3 term should be 8. And the i equals 4 term should be 11. Which of these formulas works? Well, let's start with the first one. The first one says the i equals 1 term is 3i minus 1, and when i equals 1, that's 2. That seems to be good. What's the second term? Well, when i equals 2, we get 3 times 2 minus 1, which is 5. 3 times 2 minus 1 is 5. That's still good. So this is looking pretty good. The third term is 3 times 3 minus 1, which is 8. And the fourth term is 3 times 4 minus 1, which is 11. So this one seems to work. You can try the other ones, but you'll find that they don't work for every term, or they don't work at all. Here it is. You can read this as the sum from i equals 1 to 4 of 3i minus 1. To see why this is right, you can also draw an input-output table. i goes from 1 to 4, and so 3i minus 1 has the values 2, 5, 8, and 11 for each of those values of i. So this sigma expression is the sum of 3i minus 1 when i goes from 1 to 4. So that's the sum of these numbers. Next question. 
what is the value of this sigma expression? The sum from k equals 1 to 6 of 2k squared. This is the sum from k equals 1 to 6 of 2k squared. When k equals 1, this is equal to 2 times 1 squared, or 2. When k equals 2, it's 2 times 2 squared, which is 2 times 4, or 8. 2 times 3 squared is 18. 2 times 4 squared is 32. 2 times 5 squared is 50. And 2 times 6 squared is 72. When we add these all up, we get, well, the first two are 28 plus 32 plus 50 plus 72. 28 plus 32 is 60 plus 50 is 110 plus 72, which is equal to 182. Exactly. There are six terms in this expression. The first is 2 times 1 squared, and the last is 2 times 6 squared. The sum of the six elements, which is the value of this sigma expression, is 182. We've been talking so far about finite series. If there are infinitely many terms being added together, then the series is an infinite series. For infinite series, you'll usually see an infinity symbol for the upper bound over here. So now this is the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of ai. Last question. How would you write this series? 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth plus a fifth minus a sixth and so on in sigma notation. Let's try to figure out a pattern for the ith term. When i is equal to 1, a sub i is 1 over 1. I'll put a plus sign in front of it. Because when i equals 2, we have 1 half with a minus sign. When i equals 3, we get plus 1 third again. But i equals 4 is negative. It's minus 1 fourth. In general, if we get to the ith term, the denominator is going to be i, and the numerator is going to be plus or minus 1. How do we switch between plus or minus 1? Because you'll notice that we start at plus 1, then it becomes minus, then plus, then minus. One way is to take minus 1 and raise it to the ith power. That way, when i equals 1, we get minus 1. When i equals 2, we get plus 1. And it keeps switching back and forth between minus 1 and plus 1. So a good guess for the ith term, a sub i, is minus 1 to the i over i. But when we plug in 1 for i, we get minus 1 over 1. So if this is the case, a sub 1 would be minus 1. That's not quite right. The first term should be plus 1. How can we make it positive? Well, we can multiply by negative 1 one more time. So I can make this i plus 1 up here. Now, when I put in 1 for i, I get 1 over 1, which is 1. I could have also subtracted 1 because that would have also made the numerator plus 1. Which of the terms, which of the sequences over here match that? Well, this one looks like minus 1 to the i plus 1 over i, and this one is minus 1 to the i minus 1 over i. Both of those will give us the sequence we want, and adding them up will give us the series that we want. Great. A tricky part for this question is that the terms alternate between positive and negative. So that's what this minus 1 in the numerator does. This expression in the numerator alternates between negative 1 and positive 1. So that's how you express what's called an alternating series in sigma notation, a series that alternates between positive and negative terms. Also, this plus 1 could have been a minus 1, and you'd still get the same series.